Hi, I'm excited to announce that starting this month, we have a new social collaboration piece as part of this leadership coaching every month. And you can be a part of it. You can give your comments. You can type them in. You can make audio or video comments even right into the video. It pauses. You give your comments on the content. And then once you put your comments in, you can see what everybody else has said. So it's going to be a real social collaboration right into this monthly coaching. I am really excited about it. I can't wait to see what you have to say to me and to each other every month. This should be a lot of fun. Jump into it. Hi, this is Lee Ellis with another installment of Leading with Honor Coaching. Would you like to be a great leader? I'm not talking about just a leader, but a great leader. Well, if so, I think I can help. Today, I'm going to bring you some information that's based on research and a lot of experience. You know, when I first went in the military, we, were, we learned about leadership right off the bat, even in college and ROTC. And one of the things we learned was about accomplishing the mission, and taking care of the people. Of course, character and integrity was first. That's the foundation. And then mission and people. And that is still the fundamentals of leadership. And we've worked on that for a number of years now. In fact, many years ago, we developed a leadership attributes model. Now, this leadership attributes model, I hope you can see, has character at the bottom, but then results on one side and relationships on the other. That's mission, results, relationships, people. Now we have to do both. Here's the thing. That behavioral part, that mission and people, really is part of our DNA. It's where we're born. And what we've learned is that 40% of the population is born with a tilt, we call it a leadership balance, a tilt towards results. They're naturally gifted and talented to get results, which is really important to be a great leader. You have to get results. But secondly, the other 40% is born with a natural tilt for people, for relationships. And that's very important to leadership too. But here's the secret. To be a great leader, you have to do both. And that is not easy because our DNA has got us going one way or the other. And so that's how I make a living. I help people understand how to get a better balance. And I've been doing it for more than 20 years. And it'll still be a need a thousand years from now because it's our DNA. We're born that way. And so to become a better leader, to become a great leader or a better leader, but especially a great leader, the surveys show that you need to do both. Now in Forbes magazine, recently I read an article about research of 60,000 people in the workplace, and they were commenting on whether or not they had a great leader. Those whose leader they observed to be highly results-oriented had a 14% chance. Only 14% of those were regarded as being a great leader. If you were people-oriented, their leader was people-oriented, only a 12% chance of being a great leader. 12% of their leaders were chosen. But if you had both results and relationships, mission and people, if you could do both of those well, your likelihood of being chosen as a great leader was 72%. Now, I think that makes the case pretty convincingly. And of course, as I said earlier, for more than 20 years, we have been working with this assumption because we had seen it from our own experience. Now, Dr. Richard Boyatzis is quite, quite well known in emotional intelligence in resonant leadership, resonant behaviors, and he has some great videos online. Dr. Richard Boyatzis, B-O-Y-A-T-Z-I-S, I believe it is. But he's just great. He's a PhD out of Harvard, brilliant guy, uh, aeronautical engineering uh, major out of college. But his research shows, and what he shares from is a neuroscientist research that shows from functional MRIs of the brain, there are two networks in the brain. And one network is called the task network by the scientists, the other one the social network. And as you start looking at the capabilities of those two networks, 
you're really talking very much like results and relationship, like mission and people. And the MRI show that the more you're able to function and focus toward results, the more the social part, the people start, part shrinks away. And the more you focus on people, the more the results and task focus shrinks away. So the challenge of a leader, he says, is to be able to fire on one and go toward results and then fire on the people and go toward that side. But you have to have some skills to do both of those. And that's what we've been writing about and talking about for 20 years. In fact, uh, I'd recommend you check out our case study on Abraham Lincoln on this very issue of mission and people, results relationship. It's about six or seven page case study. It's online for free. Download it there. We also have uh, a leadership assessment with a free one page report, or you can get our full leadership behavior DNA assessment online. Uh, it's probably the best in the world is showing you results, relationship, mission, and people balance. It's really focused toward that. So as you think about your leadership and your desire to be a great leader, I hope that you will look at your leadership balance, results, relationship, mission, people. You have to do both, and it's not easy. For most of us, one of those is going to be a real challenge. You're going to need some help. We have a Leading with Honor book about that, the Engage with Honor book. Both those books cover a lot of this area. Hope you'll check those out and just a lot of information on our website at leadingwithhonor.com. So hope you'll check them out and let us know how that's working for you, what's your experience, and look forward to seeing you again next month with more Leading with Honor coaching.